Okay, so we're starting video number two with rhetorical grammar. Um, specifically, we're focusing on words and phrases. Um, today's video is going to focus quickly on verbs and verb phrase in terms of form classes. Um, this is just intended to be a review of material we've already covered in class. So let's just review what verbs are. So when the dictionary identifies a word as a verb, um, it usually indicates that it has three forms. The base form, such here, like such as laugh, the, um, and then two additional inflected forms, which are the past tense, laughed, or the past participle, laughed. Um, these three forms are traditionally referred to as like the three principal parts. Um, the base form here, laugh or eat, is known as the infinitive. And it is often written with the word to, like to laugh or to eat. Um, you are probably very familiar with this from your world language classes. Um, all verbs, though, have two additional um, inflected forms. One is the third person singular, which just adds an S, like laughs, he laughs, she eats, or the present participle, which has that ing ending. So she is laughing, he is eating. Um, so all verbs have these five forms. And you, one of the things you may notice, um, specifically with the first verb, laugh, which is a regular verb, is that the past tense and the past participle are exactly the same. They add that ed to the base word. Um, and that's the essential definition of a regular verb. A regular verb is the same in the past tense and the past participle. You just add that ed. Um, the verb eat, however, is an irregular verb. And as you see, um, we have the past tense is ate and the past participle is eaten. Um, the past, because of this, um, these verbs are a little more difficult to predict. Um, and there's over 150 of them. There's a lot of irregular verbs in English. So if you have trouble with irregular verbs, you are going to need to go back and review them. Um, speaking of irregular verbs, the verbs to be um, is our only verb with more than five um, verb forms. It actually has eight forms, um, and those are am, are, is, was, were, been, being, and be. Um, and be, of course, is the infinitive, to be. Notice Hamlet, got to do the English reference here, to be or not to be. Um, so be is our only verb that has an infinitive that is different from the present tense. So, you know, to be, we don't say I be, we say, you know, I am or he is. So um, we're going to go back to that in more detail. I just wanted to mention it. Um, the point, of course, is that um, you can use your knowledge of verb inflections and the criteria form that can help you define verb just as it did with a noun. And we can come up with a simple definition um, by using that. So um, we have a definition that says the verb is a word that denotes present and past tenses. It has both an S form and an ING form. Um, so both regular and irregular verbs occur in these two forms. And the fact that they do is what makes them a verb. Um, so a lot of words in English can be both nouns or verbs. Um, so for instance, I made a promise to my boss. In this case, promise is a noun. Or I promised to be on time for work. Promised in this case is a verb. Another example, he offered to help us, offered, is a verb. We accepted his offer. In this case, offer is a noun. Um, so if a word can um, be both, you just have to be very careful in reading the sentence and figuring out its content. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of practice. I want you to pause the video and take a minute or two to write a pair of short sentences for each of the following words, demonstrating that they can be either nouns or verbs. 
So let's take a look at the word audition. You could say something like, um, I am, my audition for the play went well. In that case, audition is a noun. Um, or you could say that at six o'clock, I will audition for the play. In that case, audition is a verb. So go ahead and write your sentences and then compare them to your classmates. And when you are done, turn back on the video. Okay, so we're back and we're going to move from the verb to the verb phrase. And as you would expect, the head word of a verb phrase is a verb, um, just like the head word of a noun phrase is a noun. So the other components of a verb phrase, though, depend on what is the subclass of the verb. For example, whether it's followed by a noun phrase. So a noun phrase follows a transitive verb, like the cat chased the mouse, but not an intransitive verb, like cats fight. Um, in many, if not most, sentences, the verb phrase includes one or more adverbials. Mary laughed loudly. We are going to be studying verb phrases and details um, because the variations of the verb phrases and the sentence predicate um, is actually what dif differentiates sentence patterns. And having a variety of sentence patterns in your toolbox is what we are striving for here. Um, and one of the things to keep in mind is that just like in the noun phrases, um, a verb phrase can be complete with only a head word. So if you remember from video one, we had those two sentences that we started with, cats fight and Mary laughed. Um, in that case, we had single word subjects, cats and Mary. Um, and those are fairly common. We see that in a lot of written work. But what is unusual is the single word predicates. Um, those tend to be pretty rare. And we will be looking at all different types of um, sample sentences that deal with these ver types of verb phrases. So we have a basic formula, NP plus VP equals S. So that's a really simple way of saying subject plus predicate equals sentence. Um, but the idea, of course, with the NP and the VP is that we are looking at it more from like noun phrase plus verb phrase equals sentence. Um, the noun phrase is the subject of the sentence and the verb phrase functions as the predicate. And this is just more exact in terms of how a sentence works. Let's take a look at a little diagram. Um, we have a sentence with those two parts, noun phrase, verb phrase, just a different way of looking at it. Um, and honestly, given what you've learned so far about noun phrases and verb phrases and your intuition and reading skills, um, you should have no trouble recognizing the parts of sentences. Um, so we're going to look at a little practice. And I, I think you'll notice right away that the first word of the subject noun phrases in all of the sentences is a determiner. Remember our determiners from video one? Or the, the, some, the, and this. Um, so what I think um, you should do is identify the head words of the subject noun phrases in the six sentences just listed. So give you about one minute to work on that. And when you're done, please turn back on the video. Okay, so these are our answers. Um, in red, we have all of the determiners. And in green, um, I have the head words. So the idea, of course, is that if you can determine where your subject phrase, what your subject phrase is, you will be able to do all sorts of other grammatical issues that you'll need to deal with on the SAT in the park. You know, things like subject verb agreement, etc. But um, for now, use your knowledge of pronouns and nouns to 
um, identify these things. We're going to do another practice. So what I want you to do is figure out the boundary um, between the subject and the predicate. So the idea, of course, the idea is I want you to substitute a personal pronoun. If you remember, personal pronouns, I, you, he, she, it, they. You substitute that in for the subject. In this sentence, um, like look, the new lasagna recipe feeds an enormous crowd. So we have this new lasagna re recipe is the noun phrase. We can then substitute in a personal pronoun. It feeds an enormous crowd. Our neighbors across the hall became our best friends. So our neighbors across the hall is our noun phrase, and we can substitute in they. They became our best friends. So pretty straightforward. Go ahead and um, find the border between the subjects and the predicate in these sentences and substitute in a pronoun. When you're ready, turn the video back on. Okay, um, so here are your answers. Um, our country commissioners, it should be they passed a new ordinance, he spoke against the ordinance, she was upset with her husband, they spoke passionately for the ordinance, they are unhappy, and they prohibit billboards on major highways. Sorry, this was, this, the line should have been here, they are unhappy. Um, and as your answers no doubt show, personal pronouns stand in for entire noun phrases, not just the noun head word. Making that substitution, which you do automatically when you speak, um, can help you recognize these boundaries. And the noun phrases throughout the sentence and that subject predicate relationship um, is the first step in the study of sentence structure. Um, so we are going to continue, you know, classifying sentences into sentence patterns and looking at the pivotal, the pivotal positions of verbs and nouns and adjectives and adverbs throughout sentences. Um, we'll continue this with another video on adjectives and adverbs. Thank you. Good luck.